All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, happy New Week and welcome to um, another Monday Morning Live with Nat. And next to me, I have got the gorgeous Helena Bazan, uh, currently based in Brisbane. Well, that's where she lives uh, right now. And as you can see, she's got a beautiful uh, background there set up with her book. Are you ready for your awakening? Um, and she's, um, she's a person on a mission to spread the ripple of love. Um, and we're going to talk about that today. Um, so, um, Helena, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Oh, thank you for having me, Nat. It's so good. I've been waiting for this Monday to come. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Even on social media, you posted like your setup and all that. And I said, you should keep that. It looks so, so good. Like, you know, everything's really balanced and the light's so good. So if um, if you guys are listening and you're in business and you're on Zoom all the time, make sure you set up something that, you know, really reflect your brand and everything like that. So let's talk about a little bit about, um, I'm going to introduce you properly. So first of all, the informal introduction is that um, Helena and I kind of met online in the middle of 2020. And, um, and she came along to one of our seminars and then decided she would jump on, you know, kind of the November retreat last year, which we just reminisced, was done in quarantine while I was in Brisbane. I was hosting a whole retreat and she was nearby and you actually offered me to bring down some, you know, a care package or something along those lines, right? And so um, let me give you now the official introduction because she just recently, you know, she published a book and then she... Um, achieved the Amazon number one bestseller status, which is also um, oh, uh, amazing credibility for the mission she's on. So she's an international life coach and motivational speaker and now an Amazon bestselling author. So Helena Bazan was born and raised actually in Mexico City, where she got her BA in marketing. So she moved to Australia in 2008, leading in the fitness industry, and she was the first Zumba instructor in the Illawarra region in 2010, right? dancing to the present she's told me she does her zumba classes because she's just come out of a lockdown and they've been happening on zoom right yeah 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 love it um as a consequence of wanting to help people not only physically but mentally and emotionally helena also became a life coach in 2016 developing her lifetime project of the ripple of love helping thousands of people become the best version of themselves and she's an also master training fitness since 2019. She's a single mom based in Brisbane, and she's always striving for the best for her daughter and herself, becoming a beacon of love, of love for her community. So that's what we're here to talk about is the hidden blessings of unfortunate events that I yes. guess you've had in your life. You've had so many things, you know, moving to a whole new country with new language and all that. So let's talk about that. Tell me a little bit about your story and kind of what led to the point of you wanting to write the book. Of course, thank you, Nat. Well, yeah, um, hearing blessings of unfortunate events, I'll, I'll be just mentioning probably the unfortunate events. Yeah. Um, I think like, where, where did it all start? And everything that I've been through. Um, when I was in, in high school, I used to be bullied in Mexico. Um, I used to be called a lot of names uh, because of my physical appearance, you know? I used to be told that I was a big, very ugly person. So I grew up believing that. Because of that, I developed a personality where um, I was very insecure, um, lack of self-esteem, so no confidence at all. And uh, that led me to have very uh, toxic relationships with ex-boyfriends. Yeah. Um, I went through, I used to have, a, I remember a boyfriend that every time he used to drink, I was like 20 years old, he used to beat me. So I have, I have suffered sort of like domestic violence through that. Eventually, um, time passed, I met my ex-husband now in, uh, in Mexico and we got married here in Australia. He brought me to Australia. And um, unfortunately our marriage ended because he cheated on me <laughs> when my little daughter was three months old. Um, because of that, obviously coming into a country that I knew nobody and um, I had no family here and I was so, by myself here it was like I had to look after myself and at that time now I'm a three month old daughter um, so I started to um, do whatever I could and I can to be a, to be able to move forward through life and then obviously you know like I have been uh, receiving you know lots of blessings like Sumba came into my life and because of that I was able to meet a lot of people when I was living in Wollongong and uh, eventually that led me to come to Brisbane. And the thing with Brisbane was that 
I came here, um, once again, I always have supported my daughter's dad um, as, because he is the father of my daughter, you know. I always said to him, I want my daughter Isabella to have a relationship the same as I had with my dad. And um, he decided to move to Brisbane and I came here. But when I moved to Brisbane here, I was very sure and hopeful that everything was going to be great and happy. But little did I know, it wasn't like that. You know, it wasn't as simple. I got depressed at the beginning of, uh, it was what, uh, 2019. Yeah. I moved to Brisbane. I was very depressed and I was very sad at the time. I was studying still my master's in fitness. I stopped studying. I didn't know anyone. I was very sad. Eventually, um, at that time, I had to leave. Well, my I had a relationship in Wollongong that I had to leave. I had to leave my friends. I had to leave everything back there. Moved to Brisbane. Nobody knows me here. I felt depressed and I met a guy, which actually I speak about him in my book. Um, that unfortunately he was emotionally unavailable, but little did he know that him coming into my life, he was helping me out of my depression. Uh, we became very good friends, but I fell in love with him and he did not love me. So um, it was like, like a relationship of being in love with a rock star sort of thing, you mm. know, having a crush like that. So it was quite painful, you know, when I realized that I was in love with this man, I, um, I knew that it was going to be a painful scenario, you know. So going through all those events, you know, and also last, uh, the last unfortunate event that I experienced was that uh, last year I was, uh, I met a guy, a good friend of mine he, at that time, I thought he was, he gave me a job in his uh, construction company. I trusted him. And unfortunately, during the Christmas party, he dropped me and he abused me sexually. So I had to leave that job. And obviously that was my main income then. I had to leave that job at the end of the year. And I had to process the situation that had happened to me on my own because I felt very ashamed of talking about it because a lot of people were like, oh, this man is so good and he's so great. He would never be able to do that until actually I spoke to a, a police officer what had happened to me because, um, this police officer is a friend of mine and he said to me, you were raped. And I, I, I have not come into the awareness of it until he said that and then it sank into me. So that's when it started having an effect on me. I felt embarrassed, ashamed and all that. Eventually, um, well, I, I, I processed all that. I did the work that I had to do. And mainly the first, the first thing that I had to do was forgive myself and I forgave this man that I said to him, I really don't want to have anything to do with you at all ever. I played, um, uh, unfortunately, because it took me so long to process and realize what had happened to me. I wasn't able to prove that I was raped, so the police couldn't do anything about it, you know. Um, but anyhow, emotionally, I moved on, and uh, well, I am where I am now. But the thing with writing this book came because after experiencing not feeling happy with myself and going through so many scenarios when I was in my, in my, teenage life as in I in my mentality my way of thinking was like okay I am such an ugly person I need to balance somehow the the, the the to be able to be accepted by others because I am so ugly I'm gonna have to go above and beyond to please others so I was a people pleaser to the point that I put my life into in risk and, and uh, my health I did drugs I had a lot of um uh casual encounters with randoms that was not doing any good but for me it was like this is what I have to do for me to feel accepted you know mm. so it was all this accumulation in, in my in my in within myself of like okay more and more damage like it was a, like self-destructive I had a self-destructive attitude at that time so eventually the uh, now this is where the the hidden blessings the discovery of the hidden blessings start coming out you know after my husband cheated on me I started attending holistic counseling because I used to blame myself for it because the background that I had it's like oh I'm not good enough I'm not pretty enough of course he went and cheated on me so it's all my fault so eventually my counselor was the one who helped me understand that you know what is not your fault you need to understand who you are and through, through the work that I started doing with the, my holistic counselor, um, I started to understand so much about myself. Yeah. And I became so passionate about that, you know, I started to have compassion for me. I started to see myself 
different in the mirror, you know, to from, and that story is in the book. I, I love that story. Every time I read it, I cry because it's something that now that I am at this point in my life, I'm able to tell the story of, of the lady in the mirror is called in the, in, the, in, the, in the book. That from being a 14 year old girl that I used to slap my face in the mirror, crying and anger in, in anger and asking myself, why am I so ugly? Asking God, why did you make me so ugly? To being able to stand in front of the mirror look at myself in the eyes and say to myself, I love you. And to feel it, to truly feel it, I was able to do it and to accomplish that. So I had to go through all of that to be able to understand what it feels like to truly love myself, right? Mm. So the hidden benefit or the hidden blessing of, of, of being cheated for my husband was that I was, able, I was led to this holistic counselor who, who helped me understand who I am. You know, like the, the, the fact that I was raped in December of last year, it was very hard, but it helped me understand the importance of forgiveness, which I also speak about it on my book, you know, like yeah. uh, it is so important to be able to forgive. Mm. Being able to forgive you do that for yourself, I understood that, like, I need to let go of this, otherwise I'm going to be carrying it all my life, and I don't want that, like, it's something that you, like, talking to, to him, I said in, in an email, I said, this is something that you did wrong, but I really don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. I mm. forgive you. I'm letting you go. And it's, I did it for myself. So I learned, I, I understood the same thing, the power of forgiving. So when I did my life coaching, the intention of being a life coach was because I, here's my promo, by the way. <laughs> life coach. Life coach. Um, I wanted to be able to have precisely a, something to prove that I can be talking about these things, you know, like I'm a life coach. I understand the process of what a life coach is and I want to be able to help others. I want to be there for the people that is going through situations, hard situations. Like whenever I was going through hard stuff, there was hardly anyone there. My mom used to be the main support of my family because mm -hmm. my dad had lost his uh, business. He became an alcoholic. So it was very hard for him to find work. So my mom was the breadwinner. And she, she was also taking care of my grandma who had Alzheimer and dementia. So my mom had a huge load on, over her shoulders. And on top of that was me, you know, being bullied at school. I, I, I didn't have the connection with my mom to be able to talk to her about what I was going through. It was my dad mainly, but my dad coming from a background of, um, let me know who this person is and I'm going to go and and smack them on the face, well, that's not the answer, obviously. So I never felt supported when I was going through all of that. So what becoming a life coach was like, I want to be that person. You know, I want to be the one that is going to be there for the people that need yeah. help whenever they need it. Like I would have wanted it to have whenever I needed it. You know, it's like people have asked me, like, why do you become a life coach? And my, my response is like a metaphor. And I said, because I know what it feels like to be standing in the middle of a storm, you know, and yeah. nobody around you. So through when I um, uh, became a life coach, then I developed the ripple of love. The ripple of love comes to me uh, by that past in 2014. And I have a very close spiritual relationship with him. I speak to him, I feel him, I listen to him. It's a very strong connection. You know, I believe in that. And um, there was one day that I, I wanted to create something where people were going to be able to go to, to be able to find some sort of guidance. Yes, of course. Help. And I thought, well, Facebook at the time was very big and still is. And I said, I'm going to create a page on Facebook. So I sat down and I'm like, how am I going to do this? Well, um, I started thinking, okay, I said to my dad, and that story is here in the book too. Uh, help me find a name for this so I started brainstorming writing names words a full page of things just writing stuff you know phrases and suddenly I just dropped the pen and I covered my eyes and I started crying and I, and I said it out loud the ripple of love and I knew it I was so sure about it so I said this is it I created the ripple of love and in less than 48, 48 hours I had close to 18,000 followers on the ripple of love so to me, I took it as in like, this was meant to be, you know, this was meant to be, I don't know. And I said to myself, I don't know where this is gonna go, but this is the beginning of it. 
So eventually I have been trying to work and just trying to trust and surrender to whatever is meant to happen to my life for me to develop the ripple of love. So whenever um, that was in the end of 2019, my mom kept on saying to me, you need to write your book because you keep posting all these beautiful things through the yeah. of love page. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And I thought, well, I don't know if I really have the, the patience, this and that. And, and suddenly that's when I saw uh, you on Facebook and I'm like, oh, goodness, this is not a coincidence, you know? So <laughs> let's see what happens, you know? And here I am, you know, like here I am with the book. A year later. Exactly. Literally, I think you met exactly a year ago. I think you were at um, July seminar yes, exactly. and exactly a year and you know and so all these stories and all of this you know I guess formalizing what you do through your life coaching with clients is is within the book is that right exactly yes like everything like the process that I went through pretty much I tell my story here in the mm -hmm. book but also it's it's the process to be able to understand what do you need to do to be actually become the ripple of love because the ripple yeah. of love is not just a space on Facebook or um, uh, a life coaching thing. It's a matter of you are the ripple of love. Yeah. We are the ripple of love, you know. And what does it take for you to truly become the ripple of love, you know, from start with self-love is the most important part. Like, from Let's cover the three things. Let's, uh, you know, you've got three things that we said we're going to reveal about what it takes to become the ripple of love. But hold that thought for a second. I'll read you a couple of comments. Um, Melissa's just said, um, love you, Helena, and love your book. So amazing and how you to overcome to, feel, uh, to become and feel beautiful within uh, yourself. Thank you for sharing. Kim said, a, a perfect story of using such pain to launch your ripple of love. Uh, thanks, Helena, for your poem too. It, was, uh, it will be published in her second book. So you've had some contact with... Um, Kim and very inspiring story and a few people saying good morning. So let's let's cover off the three things of how we need to who we need to become or who we need to be um, to uh, be part of the ripple of love. Thank you. Nat. Yeah. Well, it's not that you need to become like we already are that. It's a matter yep. of discovering it. It's mm -hmm. a matter of understanding. Like the first one is self love is paramount to truly live which is like whenever you get to truly love yourself and loving yourself doesn't mean just uh, being healthy and all that. It's being able to understand who you truly are today with all the good and all the bad. You know, we have been uh, through all of our lives. Uh, we have been programming our subconscious. Every single thing that we get in contact with in our lives goes straight to our subconscious, unaware of it completely. Yeah but it, um, it triggers a lot of our behavior. So for example, it, my mom, for example, she used to tell me when I was a little girl, if you don't put shoes on when you are barefoot walking on the house, you're gonna get sick. Hmm. Uh, okay, so I grew up with that. So now it's like, if you see me here, like I'm, I'm, my steps here at home, they are carpeted, but before I get to the floor, they're like, no, I need to put my shoes on because I was, I'm gonna, that is not true, you know, but it's like everything that we have been told by our parents, everything that we get to watch on TV, the music that we listen goes into our programming and it, 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 it uh, reflects on our behavior, how we think, how we speak, everything. So understanding who you truly are, where you're coming from is okay. What is the programming that I have? Is, it, is, it, is this truly who I am? Here in my book, I tell a story of a friend that um, he comes from, a, his family is Jehovah Witnesses, and he decided to leave the congregation because he wanted to experience a different lifestyle. But he developed a personality of like, I am the black sheep of the family. And I'm like, well, I asked him like, are you truly the black sheep of your family? And I said, well, that's what my parents say. And I said, well, are you truly that? No. And I said, well, then that's, and that is my point, like to understand Everything that you're not, everything you believe you are, and discovering who you truly are. Every single human being, and that's what I discover about myself, is that we get to have so many qualities and, and, and faults as well, and the flaws that make us who we are. But that is the beauty of ourselves. There is no such thing as being able to compare one to another because everybody's different. You know, but we complement each other. Like we are part of this world and we are a race. We're a human race and everyone has a specific play or role yeah. that we are meant to perform, you know? 
So understanding who you are is, is with all the good and all the bad, and then on this, uh, learning how to uh, remembering actually how to how to love yourself. That's what's going to lead you to be able to have a different perception of life. I love myself so much, and it's like you get to see the other person, and like wow, you know that person is so beautiful, just as that person is. So it's impossible that you get to have any sort of negative attitude towards that person. It's impossible. When you, when you start loving yourself, yeah. you start seeing the beauty in others. You start uh, it's admiring. It's, it's mesmerizing. Um, so that's when you start truly understanding like the value of a flower. You know, you start seeing, wow, you know, it's just a different perception. It's like a veil is getting removed from your eyes. Mm-hmm. But it's a matter of doing the work and say, where is all this coming from? If I'm having pain because I believe I'm so ugly, like where is this coming from? Is that who I truly am? No. So that's part of your title of your book, the awakening part, right? Exactly. And that's why that's why it's called cool. Are You Ready for Your Awakening? Which is like to realize that who you truly are. So like self-love is the most important one, is number one. That's number self-love is gonna take you to everywhere in life that is gonna put you in a situation where you're gonna keep on growing and expanding. The second one, which is my favorite, is Joy is the Greatest Healer. Yeah. One of the reasons why I'm a Zumba instructor is because I love people how happy they get when they're at class, you know? There's yeah. a lot of people that have never actually seen me in my Zumba personality <laughs> on stage. I have a friend that he recently went to my class uh, before we went into lockdown into one of my classes and he's like, wow, He's like, you are crazy on stage, man. <laughs> and I said, I love it. You know, it's like just to be able to see the transformation of people when they come into class to the way they leave. They're so happy. They leave dancing, even singing some of the songs. And hey, what is this song? Can I have it? I've been playing this music in my car and I feel so happy. Mm. I love doing that. You know, joy is the greatest healer. One of the things that I speak about in my book um, and it's actually, I'll let you know, it's in chapter um, four, talks about that all the emotions that we have vibrate at a, 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 a different frequency of vibration. Joy vibrates at 540 hertz. Love mm. is at 500. So joy is higher than love. Higher. Mm. So whenever you get to be in a, in, a, a, in a frequency of vibration, we are all energy and our emotions, emotion, which is energy movement, um, we get to be like uh, in a frequency where there is no, when there, where there is joy, there's no space for fear. Fear vibrates at 100 hertz. It's one of the lowest, okay? Yeah. When people get to be judgmental and reactive, and this is something that people should be listening to it now because of the behavior of everyone out there. Whenever you get to be judgmental or reactive, it's because you are in fear, mm. okay? And I'm going to talk about that in the next point. But joy, when you're, you're vibrating in joy, it's like you are so high, literally. And that's why I think I call it, let's get high here in my book, yeah. <laughs> something like that. When you're vibrating at that frequency, so that, um, there is no space for sickness. There is no space for worry. There is no space for nothing. So if you're actually not feeling well, like if you're feeling sick, whatever, play, watch movies that make you laugh, dance, listen to yeah. the music that you love, sing. You know, like anything is going to bring joy to you. I said, always search for your moments of joy on a daily basis. You know, what's going to make you happy? I mean, listening to music, having a cup of tea, having a cup of hot chocolate, nothing like just nothing in excess is good. You know, a glass of wine, uh, having a conversation with someone. Like, I experienced a lot of moments of joy with um, a very good friend of mine. Uh, actually, he's the one I speak about in the book. Um, he has a different perception of life. And just listening to him talk about it, for me, it's like, wow. And I enjoy that so much. It's like, I spend, when I go see him and visit him at his house, it's like, I'm there for five, six hours. Yeah. The time, he's the one talking. And then they say, we maybe talk a lot. He doesn't shut up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> talks, but it's amazing. And I have such a great time. And like, I do it because it brings me joy. So, like I say, when you enjoy, there is no space for sickness. There is no space for, for worry. Just seek for the moments of joy. 
And then we have the, the wise choice between love and fear. And it's like I was saying before, uh, whenever you feel judgmental, reactive, and actually when you're angry, you're coming from a place of fear. And we all hold the power of choice in which, okay, I don't want to be coming from a place of fear. Okay, then how could you be coming from a place of love? Be kind. You don't necessarily have to be aggressive or uh, disrespectful to stand up for a point of view. You can say anything and everything by being kind, you know? Like nowadays, it's okay to disagree, period, okay? We are not meant to get divided. We are meant to get united as humanity, as a race. Yeah. The more, the higher the frequency of vibration of everyone around us, like if I am happy, that's going to create a ripple of happiness. Yeah. If you are in fear, that's going to create a ripple of fear. Mm. So it's a matter of, we have the power of choice and in our hands is the change that we want to see in the world. I love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. And I've also heard that love and fear live in totally opposite sides of the brain. So if you focus on one, you cannot focus on the other. And if you focus on the other, you cannot focus, you know, on both at the same time. Okay. So it's about making that choice every single day. It's really, it's really, um, I think it's powerful. These three points are really powerful and people should look up, um, you know, the deeper explanation behind it all with the stories within your book, because that's where you don't just like drop a word like joy and self-life and fear, you know, and understand it. There is a level of um, a journey you've got to undertake, which is what, why you say you're ready for your awakening, because someone has to go through that journey. They've got to do the work and they've got to self-reflect and all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you can see it. For example, when you when you are in fear, the physical, uh, uh, when how it affects people. Oh yeah, yeah. It, when you are in fear, your immune system drops. You create yeah. stress in your body, which creates cortisol, which drops the immune system. And you get sick. Exactly. Yeah, I <laughs> know. It's it's like, like joy, you know. So yeah. it's like, yeah. I was trying to explain to my ten-year-old daughter last night. Um, about the mind body connection like if you're not well or something pops up on your body she's got a little wart on her foot um at the moment and i said that's got something to do with the way you um you know what maybe is going on in your mind and what you're telling yourself and things like that and I actually looked up in louise hey you can heal your life you know what does warts mean and it means like some level of feeling ugly or whatever and and there was like an affirmation of what you should say i said you should say this twice a day you know and i'm kind of you know sort of teaching my children a little bit about that kind of connection because any uh, illness it's it's the what is it this is you know how they say it's um it's often connected to how we think and what we tell ourselves love it yeah, yeah. So how was the process of writing your book tell me a little bit about you know you've been through this 12 month journey and you only really began properly in november and you had your book like three or four months after that um tell me a little bit about that I loved it, you know, um, the first thing, like, obviously, when I started with the idea of I'm going to write a book, I don't know how this is going to happen. I had already written an introduction. Yeah. I did not know yet how I was going to, what was I going to call it? Yes. But I had already an introduction and I knew I wanted to base it on, first of all, self-love. Yeah. And eventually, when I went to the seminar and I found you guys, I'm like, this is great. I am, I, I, I must admit, I procrastinate a lot. Right. I am a Cancerian and Cancerians we tend to be procrastinators you know I procrastinate a lot and I am the kind of person and I do it on purpose because whenever I know that I have to fulfill something and I put myself under pressure that's when I work my best yeah. if I know that I have time and all that I leave it until the last minute but I do it you know and I'm, but I'm trying to work on that and I think I'm getting better hence being able to set up this space I'm like I'm gonna do it from the day before otherwise <laughs> I'm yeah. just watching. Um, so when I found you guys and, and then I did the retreat in November of 2020, I said, this is perfect because now I have a guide of, first of all, how to do it, which made it more easy, like easily as in like having points. Okay, what are you going to be talking about? Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, main yeah. point. And then it was amazing because I could focus in chapter by chapter. So I developed one chapter. Second chapter, I was so happy with it. Like it went so fast. I mean, in a matter of a month, I had written like four or five chapters because I had the idea like concentrated in, in just like bullet points and then developing those. Yes. 
And then um, when we came to retreat, I was like, I'm always, I'm, I was in the middle of it. I was in the middle of writing the book. Uh, and I, being able to have the time through retreat, I said like, okay, this is it. I have to, I have no choice. I have to sit down and do it, you know, because I am in the middle of retreat. I'm not going to come back to the call and say, that. I watch TV now. No, but I sat down and I did it. So which yeah. led me to almost the finish of my book. The only situation with me was that uh, Christmas came about a new year. So it was like a month that I hardly do anything for the book. Yeah. But once that was happening, I was like, this is it, went to the uh, edit. Uh, I love the, my editor. She was absolutely beautiful. And um, uh, I fell in love with how she wrote things for me because as you know, yeah. English is my second yeah. language. So I apologize and I said, please excuse the grammatical horrors that you're gonna find in there, but <laughs> please understand, you know? Yeah. And it was amazing. And um, once I, I was, I had it, I remember I cried. I, Bella was here with me and I said, I said, look, I said to her, this is it, the product of my book, you know, and it was amazing. I loved it because uh, it was, it flew and it yeah. like very easily, like it went smooth. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any, anything complicated. I didn't have any mind block or nothing. I was driving. I remember that I used to record myself when I had ideas for a chapter. I was like, oh, I need to do a, a record at least because otherwise I'm going to forget, you know? And then I would come to the time when I was going to write and like, oh yeah, I remember writing this and talking about this. So I loved it. It was great. And congratulations, you were an, um, a you know, model student following the recipe, following the structures, following the timelines, attending your accountability calls, you know, doing everything. And that's why it's in your hands. And you did Amazon bestseller, you know, achieved that status. And I'm really, really proud of everything. So where can people get the book? Tell us, where do you have it available for purchase? You can get it. I have a website for The Ripple of Love. The, the website is called therippleoflove.com.au. You can purchase yes. the book there. Um, or if you find me on the street, you can. I'm always <laughs> carrying my books. I'm always carrying my books. <laughs> good one. Good one. I love it. So that's The Ripple of Love. We can see it if you're seeing this on video yeah. behind uh, Helena.com.au. And I know also you can look up the book. Um, Are you ready for your awakening? Also, all your good online resellers like Amazon and all that sort of stuff. But go grab it from her because she'll sign it for you. Yeah. Um, yeah which is which is way way better and um i've loved watching your journey and i can't wait to see what also continues to unfold um over the months as we said you would like to have a physical launch but not quite yet because of you know the current situation which we all know but i've given you some advice before we started this call get everything else set up so when we get out there with people we can um yeah, <laughs> exactly so I really appreciate your time this morning, um, you know, and learning the story and some of your tips, you know, the key things here that we will learn today is, you know, focusing on, you know, looking at your programming and developing your own self-love, you know, to, you know, uh, what is your truth, if you like, yeah. um, that joy is the greatest healer. And how do you tap into joy every single day? Because that's the high frequency that we should be operating in most of the time. It's not possible all the time, but most of the time it is. And then that to choose the choice between love and fear, because they don't live in the same side of the brain. So if we focus on one, we cannot focus on the other. Um, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Helena. And um, next time I'm up in your state, um, I look forward to seeing you um, at a get together once again. Yeah. Have an amazing week. Bye, gorgeous. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.